Hey y'all, Darla here with Growing Tropical. So I'm out in my garden in the backyard tonight and I was just inspecting some of my plants, in particular the bougainvillea that here is here in front of me. Now these bougainvillea I planted up in a recent video. Um, you, I'm gonna drop a link in the bottom of this video so you guys can go and check it out if you're interested. But anyway, what I'm doing is I was just kind of inspecting them because when I planted these guys in these hanging baskets, even though they do get a, a west exposure sun, they don't get it until about later in the, probably around say one, one two, between one and two o'clock is when they start getting it. Bougainvillea need to have a very, very, like at least five hours of hot, direct sun. So these guys get probably just either just about or just maybe under about five hours of sun. The basket that's directly behind me, and I'll take, take you guys over there and show you those in a few minutes, but those are really starting to bloom pretty nice and they're blooming all around the tips. But that one probably gets just a hair more sun than this one right here. So as I was inspecting it tonight to see if I could find any little areas where they might be blooming, I came across some bug damage. Now this isn't uncommon actually for me to get this. Normally I get um, some, some little things here and there, thrips, um, I'm trying to think of not, not mealybugs, but thrips, leaf miners, and little caterpillars actually will from time to time bug my bougainvillea. And sure enough, when I came out, I found little itty bitty tiny green caterpillars curled up in the leaves. Let me go ahead and just show you guys in the camera, get the camera a little closer and show you guys what I saw. So as, we're, as I'm inspecting, I'm looking here and I start seeing excrement. Now this is these little black spots here that you can see, let me get the camera real close here. These little black spots that you see, that is actually excrement from the caterpillars. And I've got them just randomly on uh, leaves. Now you can see this one's a little bit better because that one's got a white variegation leaf. But as I was going over and checking it out, you can see some more damage right here. Now this is, looks like a little bit of caterpillar damage right in here and here as well. Usually what they'll do is they'll get up and close and personal to a leaf. Let me see if I can find that leaf that I was inspecting a few moments ago and it had curled itself all up in the leaf. Bear with me one second. I'm gonna find you guys that leaf. Okay, here's one right here. See how it's nice and curly? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to steady the camera up a little bit and I'm gonna to try to open the leaf and let's see if we can't find the caterpillar that might be inside here. Let's see, oh, look at there. I think that's him, is that him right there? Right here on the, oh goodness, let me get my, nope, I don't think it is. Hold on, we're gonna open this guy up and see if we can't find him. Ooh, I'm sorry you guys, I'm trying to do this with one hand, so bear with me, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and Open him up, Let's see if there's a caterpillar in there. And yep, there he is. Look at this guy. Can you see him, y'all? He's squiggling around there a little bit. I'm just gonna try to bring that up really close, but he's squiggling around in there. Whoops. I hope you guys can see that. So he is just a little tiny baby that curled himself all up in that leaf. And look at all the damage that he's done. So. I am going to treat this guy. Whoops, let me bring the camera back up. I'm gonna treat this guy with spinosad, actually. Let me explain to you why I'm choosing to use the spinosad instead of BT. Normally when you deal with caterpillars, you usually use like a BT, which is a Bacillus thuringiensis, and that is a natural bacteria that's found in your soil, and I use it a lot. But since, now I did detect that this is a caterpillar, but I also have some thrips and I have some leaf miners. Actually, I had them over on the other side and I had them on a Chefalera. So they are actually in these flower beds a little bit. I've been fighting them just a tiny bit. I'm choosing to go ahead and use a spinosad because spinosad actually will kill a little bit more than just the caterpillar. So if you have a situation where you know that you just have caterpillars on a certain something something in the garden, going ahead and using a BT would be a perfect choice for you to do. However, if you know that you're battling some other bugs, like in this case, thrips or leaf miners, along with caterpillars, you might want, might want to use something that's a little bit more broad range. And so that is why I'm choosing to go ahead and use a spinosad. Let me show you what I'm going to use. 
I use this guy right here. This is the Captain Jack's by Bonine, and this is a Spinosad. Now this will actually, uh, this is a ready to use. Sometimes you can buy it like in just like the concentrate, but I like the ready to use, especially when I'm just doing like baskets like this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna spray all over. I'm gonna glove up, even though this is an organic product, it's still wise, even with organics, like they say that you really should just use um, maybe a little protection on your hands or whatever, because you certainly don't want to expose yourself to, you know, any kind of, you know, chemical, even though it's a, it's a, an organic or a natural product, you still want to protect your hands from, you know, uh, uh, unlimited exposure, I, sh I guess I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some gloves. I'm going to actually grab some latex gloves because I like to get up close and personal and really like just kind of, you know, get it all up in there, especially since this vegetation is so thick. But um, again, another reason why I like the spinosad in this particular case too is if I would use a BT, now these guys are babies in here. Sometimes when they're larger, you can go in and you can pick them off. But when they're babies like this, I wanna make sure that I'm using a product that's gonna have a little bit more of a residual. And from what I'm understanding, the research that I've been doing on the Spinosad versus the BT, the Spinosad's gonna hang out maybe a little bit longer. I may get a little bit more residual protection with the Spinosad versus the BT. So, but don't get me wrong, I love BT as well. But in this case, like I said, to reiterate, I've got, I think maybe a couple more things that might be going on in this plant such as leaf miners or even thrips because I've got them up close and personal in these other garden beds that, that are directly underneath. So I want to make sure that I'm going to go ahead and spray and just eradicate whatever is going on. So whoops, I threw that little bug down there and I hope it's I hope I squashed it before it dropped so it doesn't get on any other plant. So let me go ahead and glove up and then I'm going to go ahead and give this guy and uh, this guy and the guy behind us a quick spray. I want to lift this vegetation up and like I said, I like to spray, I even like to spray the soil a little bit when I'm doing stuff like this because sometimes things fall down in there where they come from the soil. I haven't really seen any excrement on this particular one. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. And as soon as I'm finished here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys over to the other one. But isn't she pretty? I just love the variegated leaves on these Bougainvillea. They're absolutely beautiful. Okay, you guys, I'm all done spraying. It was quick and simple. Just a little, you know, a little spray like that when you see bug damage in the very beginning is gonna save you a lot of aggravation because when you start seeing that little bit of damage, just that little bit of damage that I showed you guys in the very beginning um, of this video, that the little bit of leaf curling, and then we actually saw a, a worm. When you can catch it when they're babies like that and you can catch it before they are infested, you're gonna have a much better success rate at actually doing it the first. I may have to come back actually and treat it a second time. But, um, and then just to back up a little bit, um, I, I hope that this video was a little in, a little bit informational as far as knowing the difference between the BT and the Spinosad. And in this case, um, I definitely have caterpillar damage, there's no doubt about that. But because I do have, again, on the Sheffalier that's behind me, we were I was treating this one for thrip and then, um, or actually, Leaf miners, I'm sorry. This had leaf miners and the Indian hawthorn that are below me have had the thrips and so I was treating it. And I thought, you know, these Bougainvillea baskets are just kind of up close and personal here. And I just want to make sure that there is not any other type of bug that's going to be, you know, lurching in here. And if I, if I go ahead and use the Spinosad, which is geared a little bit more for the leaf miners and the thrips, as well as the caterpillars, and it has a little bit more of a residual um, than the BT. And again, like I said, the BT, I love it. I use it a lot for my caterpillars, but in this case, I think this, that the Spinosad was probably the better choice. So again, I hope that again, that um, you got a little bit of, of information for, from this video. And if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And I'd sure like it if you'd subscribe to the channel, if you're liking the content. So until the next video, you guys, bye for now.